and everything before. Some haven't. That is a uh, monitor there that lets you know what's going to air. So uh, we do a thing that's called a pre. Welcome to our live broadcast from the Mountain of God Tabernacle, high atop Mont Eagle Mountain, Tennessee. My name is Apostle Terry Dunn, and I'd like to tell you that we are a five-fold, full gospel, interdenominational church, which offers contemporary praise and worship, the teaching of God's Word, healing, deliverance, prophetic ministry, and much more. We are located in beautiful downtown Mount Eagle, Tennessee at 331 King Street. That's at the corner of King and Fourth. Our Sunday morning worship service starts at 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, and everyone is welcome. Now, if for some reason you cannot attend our sanctuary, be sure to join our live stream at wildfireonthemountain.com. That physical address again is 331 King Street, or you can watch us live at www.wildfireonthemountain.com. Good morning and welcome to Mountain of God Tabernacle. We're glad you joined us this morning. Beautiful Mount Eagle, Tennessee. We had a little weather here last night and some fog, so <laughs> we're enjoying that this morning. We're going to start with the sounding of the shofar. The Bible calls this the trumpet of the Lord. Love Microsoft, don't we? Uh, just so y'all know, that's I need to update, I guess, huh? Let's do that again. What do you think? The devil's not gonna stop us this morning, I'm telling you that. We got some apostles coming up in the house this morning. The weapon formed against us. Lord, you are good and your mercy. Yeah. 
pockets of pictures all the time. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time. You are good. We worship. Oh, hallelujah. 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 We worship you. Who you are. We worship. Oh, we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. Who you are. You are good all the time. All the time. You are good all the time. All the time. Time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are, good. yes, you are all the, time. all the time, all the time. You are good, give a praise this morning. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Well, Apostle Mark Lewis and Brandon Moore of the Rejoicing Apostolic Ministry, they're going to come and uh, share a song with us here. We're going to get some microphones for them. And it's okay. We're a, we're a clap and praise the Lord church. So you can give them a hand. Round of applause. We know we're not Don't applauding to hold man, that up to your mouth, we're applauding now. the efforts for God. Amen. Here you go. <laughs> okay. everybody doing? I won't give up or give in. I'm holding on till the end. I will be steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in you, Lord, I'm staying in your will, yeah, Lord, I'm staying in your will. I won't give up or give in. I'm holding on till the end. I will be steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in you, Lord, I'm staying in. Your will, I'm staying in your will, Lord, I'm staying in your will, I'm staying in your will, yes, yes, Lord, I'm staying, just staying, Lord, Yes, I'm staying, I'm staying in your will. I'm staying in your will. I'm staying, Lord. I'm staying in your will. I'm staying in your will. I'm staying in your will. I'm staying, Lord. I'm staying in your will. I'm staying in your will. I'm on my way to my destiny, hey. to victory. I'm on my way. Yes. 
no chains holding me it's right in my reach i can't see clearly because i'm on my way i'm on my way to my destiny to victory i'm on my way no chains holding me it's right in my reach i can't see clearly because i'm on my way and I see, oh, 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 I'm on my way. And I see, oh, 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 I'm on my way. I'm on my way to my destiny. To victory, I'm on my way. No chains holding me. It's right in my reach. I can't see clearly because I'm on my way. I'm on my way to my destiny. To victory, I'm on my way. No chains holding me. It's right in my reach. I can't see clearly because I'm on my way. And I see, oh, 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 to victory, I'm on my way. No chains holding me. It's right in my reach. I can't see clearly because I'm on my way. Oh, 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 oh I'm, I'm on, on my, my way. way. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Oh, I'm on my way. Destiny is in front of me. Yeah, I'm on my way. And I say, Destiny is in front of me. Yeah, I'm on my way. I like that. You feel the anointing on that. Hallelujah. God bless everyone this morning. Yes. Thank God to be here. Today at the mountain of God Tabernacle, and we're getting ready to introduce the speaker. Um, from we all came from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and this in, this speaker, she's a great, great woman of God. She's a powerhouse. She's a not only my wife, but she's she's a great woman. She's a great mother. And she's keeps me grounded. <laughs> keeps me keeps me grounded, you know, keeps me, you know, stable and everything. So she's a great woman of God. She's awesome. She's a firepower. And I want you to introduce not only an apostle, but she's also a prophetess. She's also an elder. And I want you to introduce apostle, prophetess. Elder Esther Montgomery Lewis.
Praise the Lord, everyone. To all our, I used to say back when I was a kid, to all the saints and friends and visitors and everyone on the internet line, we want to just thank you for being here today for this message that uh, I was in Pennsylvania and the apostle called me and he said, I was on my way taking care of some business, and he said, the Lord told me to tell you, I was just coming out for, you know, the uh, ordination. And he said, the Lord told me, give you Sunday. I said, okay, give me Sunday. But God had already spoke to me because we were having um, uh, uh, elders get together. And God had already spoken to me about um, a message to talk to the elders about what type of church do you want? What type of church would you rather be in? And that was the message he had given me. But I thought it was for Friday night, and it wound up being the service today. So I'm just blessed with that. I'm thanking him that he didn't let me have to get up here and figure out something. I already got something to get, give to you guys. I'm going to go into the book of Revelation. Um, the first chapter. And if everybody has, okay, we're going to do the introduction uh, and the benediction before we get into the churches. Yes, um, coming from Revelations, I'm reading out the New King James Version. And in the introduction to the benediction, uh, first, chap first verse is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified by his angels to his servant John, who is bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things, that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the word of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. Amen. And as you hear in the uh, introduction and the benediction that the time is here, we are in our end time right now. And um, this is what uh, Jesus, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so he wants you, just if you don't remember anything else, remember these are the end times. And so now we're going to go to the greetings. Yeah. Okay, the, the greetings of the seven churches. Verse 4, John to the seven churches, which is are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is, who is and who was and who is to come from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the king of the earth. To him who loved us, washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has, and has made us kings and priests to his God and, and Father. To him glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now what we're going, where I'm going is to the seven churches. And as I go through the seven churches, you let me know. Well, you don't have to let me know, but let God know which church you'd rather be in. The first church is the loveless church. Okay, the loveless church. Revelations 2, verse 1. To the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? These things say, he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. 
and you have tested those who said they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. You have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Netherless, I have this against you. All right, you hear God saying all that they had done. Nevertheless, I have this against you. So even though you are acting as an apostle, even though you're saying, taking that title, but then you're doing these other things and God understands. But nevertheless, he said, I am against you. That you had left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from his place unless you repent. But this you have that I, you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear. And the Spirit says to the churches, to him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And what God is saying is that he understands when you make mistakes and you're doing things that you're not supposed to do. But as I can say, and I was hearing earlier yesterday, this is the day of the first day of the rest of your life, Apostle. You hear what God is saying. He said, nevertheless, what he would do. And then he said that uh, he's against it. But he's asking you also in that scripture to repent. And that's what he wants you to do is to repent. And if you're doing this, those things in his name's sake, and it's evil, he wants you to repent. So that's, what he's, that's what's happening in the loveless church. Those um, attributes that just was read about with the loveless church. Now we're going to go over to the persecuted church. The persecuted church. Verse 8. And to the angels of the church in Smyrna write, These things say to the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulations, poverty, but you are rich. And I know these blasphemies of those who say that are Jews and are not, but are synagogues of Satan. Do you not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer? Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until, I, t- until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear from the Spirit, says to the churches, He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Okay, um... Uh, read the first part again one more time, Apostle. Persecuted church. And to the angels of the church in Smyrna writes, These things say that the first and last who was dead and came to life, I know your works, tribulations, and poverty, but you are rich. Okay, so you understand what God is saying. He said he understands and he knows your work. You know, all apostles are working and doing things that they are, think they're supposed to do or things they are supposed to do. But the Lord is saying, I know your works. He understands all of that. Okay. Okay, the compromising church, verse 12. And to the angels of the church of Pergamos, right? These things say, he who has the sharp two-edged sword, I know your works, and where you dwell, there Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name, and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Anatophis was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put stumbling blocks before the children of Israel, to eat things, sacrifice to idols, and to commit sexual immoralities. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the nucleation, which things I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly, and we will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written which no one knows except him who receives it. Now the compromising church, Let me elaborate on that one. 
is a church that just compromises with everybody just so they can hold the members. No matter what's going on in the congregation, who's talking to who, who's out of line, who's not in order, that's called the compromising church. That's where the pastor, the whomever they call themselves, the apostles or whoever they may be, they're compromising. And we have more manipulation and compromising going on in the church instead of the real word. And this is what God is saying to them is what he's going to do with, those, with that church as well. Amen. The corrupt church, verse 18. And to the angels of the church of Tyre, Tyre, right? These things say that the Son of God who has eyes of a flame of fire and feels like fine brass. I know your works, love your service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you, because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deed. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall not that I am he who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your word. Now to you I say, and to rest in Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden, but to hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nation. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to, the, to pieces like a potter vessel, as, as I also have received from my father, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now you um, heard what was said about the corrupt church. That's a church where they allow anybody to get up. That's whoever paying the highest tithes and who have the nicest car. Um, those types of churches are corrupt because they take the money from the people as well. And they do the manipulation as well. It doesn't matter what is happening and what's going on with that member. They allow them to be in office. They allow them to, you know, structure things for the church. And then um, I remember in, uh, when I was doing uh, healing and deliverance on last Monday, the Lord had given me a vision of a certain gentleman in Philadelphia who has a church that is doing exactly what this is saying. And what he's doing is just taking the people's money, manipulating the people, the children who know the way are afraid to go back and tell the parents so they can get out. And he said to me, and I hadn't, re hadn't I read this, but I didn't pay attention to that part about the children. And he said to those who are corrupt, have corrupt churches, that the children would be killed of those people from the ages of birth to seven. And I heard it, and he said, because I can still make, get my angels out of them. So the, the corrupt church and where he is saying, I'll take your children, it also brings about um, generational curse. When you know something is corrupt and you continue to deal with it, you continue to allow it to go forth and go on, and then your children see that you don't see nothing wrong with it, then they become corrupt. And then you got another bloodline come, and they are corrupt. So that's where corruption comes from in the church, because everything with the apostles or preachers or whom they may call themselves, everything falls from the head down. So if we are not right, our members are not going to be right either. If we are up here corrupting people, taking money, saying all kind of things that it's not in his word, when, when uh, Apostle Lewis was reading, you could go right over what he was reading, and you could understand exactly what he was saying, 
and you could study it later, and it will still mean the same thing, but God may give you some more out of that. But that's the corrupt church, and who would want to be in a corrupt church, corrupted, and then their bloodline becomes corrupt and lose their children? And I was also sharing about a gentleman that I knew that pastored back uh, when I was a kid, and he had over 17 children. And I saw the way that he was doing the people. He lost five of his children tragically, you know. And I've seen this happen in the apostolic church, Pentecostal, Holy Ghost. They had it all, but then he was corrupt, and it fell on his bloodline, which was his children. So this will happen if we don't do what God tells us to do and what this book is saying. You can't lose your children behind that. And, it, and, and um, it doesn't have to mean that they're just going to just die. They'll be out there. They'll do things that will bring harm or death to themselves. So this is what has happened in the corrupt church. I'm going to Revelation 3, the dead church. And to the angels of the church of Sardis, right? These things say, he who has seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your work, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, you will not watch. I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names even in Sardis who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who, come, he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garment, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels." He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Okay, now that's the dead church. Have you ever went into a church and it was just so dead? <laughs> I mean, you just, everybody's clapping their hands. Yeah. <laughs> the pastor get up, everything's just dry, dead, because they have no light from God. There is no anointings there because they are not doing the things that are pleasing in the sight of God. And then he just takes the lamp. He takes the aura. He takes everything because all of the people are paying attention to man. They're not paying attention to God and what God is saying. They got to ask the pastor. They, the, they got to ask people things instead of getting on their knees and asking God. And so when they all get together, they all about what the man said, and they got a dead church because nobody has heard from God. So you can't have his spirit. Where God is not that. When you separate him, he's not there. So that's what happens with the dead church. The faithful church. Verse 7. And to the angels of the church in Philadelphia, right? These things say, he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. I see how... Now I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength. I have my kept word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those synagogues of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but I lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall overcome upon the whole world to test those who dwell in the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on, on him the name of my God and the name of the, whole, and the, name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven, from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And that's the faithful church. 
that is the type of church that you would want to be operating in, that church, the faithful church, because God gives so much more to us when we are doing his will as opposed to when we are manipulating and using people like those other churches we just heard of. That's, that is the church that we want to be, a faithful church. need 